What's up, everybody? My name is Juwan Rohan, and this is the Misguided Podcast. We intend to guide you to a better future. I'm sitting here with Antoine Bandelay, a publisher. How are you doing today, my brother? It's very well. Thanks for having me on this fine morning. Of course, of course. It's it's a pleasure. Um, rough morning for you, man, or what? No, nah, I just wake <laughs> up very, very much later because uh, I go to sleep at like, you know, 4 a.m., which I did last night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's cool, man. That's the life of a, a editor. Um, are you are you able to share what you were working on last night or no? Um, I the two that I was working on, I don't know. I haven't talked to the authors, but one was a romance erotica because that's like okay. what gets me the most jobs because that's they write like a book, two books a month or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. And the other was a middle grade uh fantasy uh based on Greek mythology. Okay. Which is something that's definitely more, you know, what I do, what I what I write and what I read typically. Yeah, I was gonna ask, like most of your books when I was looking at the website are like Greek mythology. Am I am I wrong or no? No, I mean it's mythology, but it's all uh, African and African diaspora. So I don't do I, any kind of okay. um uh Anglo or European or even Asian uh mythology um in my <laughs> works. Yeah, 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 yeah. Is that is that like on purpose? Like yes, still- that's very much dead uh on purpose <laughs> and I, intentional. I feel it. I feel it. Cool, cool. Because we've we've seen, uh, I mean, not like any shade. Like I love Lord of the Rings. You know, I'm really into like you know, Crashy Tiger, Hidden Dragon anime. It's really dope. But like I, we've seen a lot of that. You know, and I would like to see you know a little bit more um, from my ancestral line. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, that's dope. That's dope. And and like, so who does the the cover? We'll get to this later. But who <laughs> who does the who does the cover arts? Because they're like very detailed. Uh, multiple people. So uh, okay. I've worked with four different artists for different parts of my project. So for like Knucklehead Fred series, I worked with a Nigerian uh, artist named Balaji Olaloye. I worked with two Southeast Asian uh, gentlemen, one from, I think, the Philippines, the other from Thailand. Um, I worked with one American. I think he lives somewhere in the Midwest. I don't know exactly where. Um, And I think those are the four. Yeah, those are the four I've worked with uh, so far. And then also I worked with this European, uh, Eastern European, company that does the typography uh for my book so like that's the cool thing about being indie and then being indie in like the 21st century is that you know most of the collaborators i work with don't live within a 500 you know mile radius of me yeah yeah yeah. that's that's dope and and they're way cheaper like that too so (laughs) yeah um, the american one who is the one who does my tj books the um the young adult uh, series is the the most expensive one because he's american you know (laughs) yep 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 that's hilarious um that's cool man that's cool well shit for the audience who doesn't know um you do books (laughs) yeah um but uh, let's go ahead and, and, and dive into your story. You know, I like to start where you're from because that's where a lot of the story starts. So, so where are you from? Uh, Los Angeles, California, born and raised, which is funny because a lot of people that I meet nowadays, I was we were talking about that I play softball. Like I'll meet a lot of people through that and they're like, oh, where are you from? I'm like, from here? What do you yeah. mean? Like, because everybody moves here, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, but I actually like, you know, was born and raised here. I, I you know, uh, lived through the, the the big quake that we had in 94, the, the LA riots, you know, after Rodney King, like I was here for all of that. I mean, I, I was a little child, you know, but yeah, you know, yeah. I, I do remember like the fires and the smoke and all that kind of stuff. Um, and then my, my fish dying because during the earthquake, uh, our fish tank fell over and I was like, That's Oh no, so, so oh, my goldfish. Yes. Yeah. Like, you know, I don't really care about the, the whole Rodney Keener, but I'm like my goldfish. Yeah, you yeah, know? Yeah. Um, uh, so yeah, I came from here. So I was, you know, kind of influenced by, you know, the Hollywood, uh, nature of, of this place, uh, because the cosmos told me to order to write, like, since I was a young child, like my mom encouraged it. Cause I was writing a lot. Um, I used to write like actual like novel stories and like these little uh the the 70 page ruled uh, college ruled or yeah, wide yeah. ruled uh, notebooks yeah. or whatever yeah um and in after getting out of high school i got a scholarship for a screenplay award that i um that i earned uh, at a place called inner city filmmakers um, and i still was like nah i'm not gonna write i'm gonna try and direct um and then like in uh university uh, same thing with my instructor saying like, oh yeah, you should be writing. And I'm like, no, nah, I'm gonna do this YouTube thing. You know, it's like for years, I was just like kind of saying no to it um, until like four years ago when I started doing the indie publishing thing. Um, yeah. Because I was like, I want to do these other things that other people around me in this town are doing. No one's really writing books. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. No, that, so how, how old are you? 31. 31. Okay, cool, cool. Um, And so, so you're, you're saying okay i want to talk about this because a lot of people want to do a lot of different things right and 
And, um, and that's kind of like where we get caught up is wanting to do too much. And then we end up mm -hmm. not doing anything right or not doing what we love. So when you're when you're like, No, I want to do this YouTube, I want to do this other stuff. What like, is there something in you that is like telling you that you should be writing because obviously now you're on the path of writing and you absolutely love it. Is there something that you felt like was like holding you back at all? Not really holding back, but really just like getting down and doing the work because I've always known I have the ability and I've always like innately wanted to. Like I was making audiobooks and like fan fiction, you know, through all that time and writing and stuff like that. Yeah. But never like taking it seriously enough because um because during that time, yeah, like I was saying, like YouTube was like taking off and I like really focused on that. I was working at a retail job, uh, Apple retail for five years. So I was like focusing on that kind of stuff too. But then as YouTube was taking off, I switched over to that and like left Apple because like apparently people like geeky stuff like avatar and star wars and me talking about hypothetical battles and like you know theory videos stuff like that um but then that was actually taking away from like you know my like my talent yeah, and i yeah. didn't think of it until like you know much later but i mean to be fair it was the entrepreneurship that i learned from being a youtuber and being self-employed that did lead and, and a lot of those lessons i had like led into what i'm doing now with indie publishing yeah. Okay. Let's. I was gonna save the all the YouTube shit for for last. Um. Because honestly, when I first was introduced to you, shout out uh, Royal Banks for putting me on to you. Uh. But when I first was introduced up, to Royal? you, and then I googled you, I had no idea you're like a YouTube phenomenon. <laughs> so like, um. So in, in the YouTube space, I am small, but I can see how someone who's like doesn't is like, oh man, like, yeah. what is it? I think it's like a quarter of a million, but like you're quarter million two sixty nine doesn't matter in today's youtube world like that's like peanuts today <laughs> it's it's peanuts but and we're gonna talk about this but there, there's possibility for income right yeah and, and exactly and, which is a very good lesson and even even if that you have two hundred and sixty nine thousand, and i mean there's people who have you know millions you can use that 269 and turn them into people who support your book, right? People who, yep. who support you outside of YouTube. And so I think that's what we're going to get into. That's why I was going to save it for last, but we might as well just go ahead and get into it. Um, <laughs> so, okay, your YouTube journey, how does it begin? You're at the Apple store and you've always been interested in this geeky stuff, but like, how right. does, how do, what made you start a YouTube channel? That's super hard because I'm trying to get the misguided podcast off the ground. And it's super <laughs> hard to get to that first thousand. Yeah, yeah. And then thousand, and I'm glad you brought that up because I'm gonna bring up the thousand thing um, okay. later. But YouTube I had even back in high school because uh, back in that, time of 2005 or whatever it was it was the best place to put videos on because you know you had to pay for bandwidth back then like if you had a website you had to actually like pay for your bandwidth and so like oh, put it on youtube it's free you don't have to worry about your bandwidth whatever yeah. um so i would put like my short films on there and like uh vlogs and things like that um but it wasn't until like youtube started generating money that i like actually focused on it in a way of being like oh okay like let me like generate income um and there were these videos that were coming out called the versus series um where i saw individuals who were doing like you know uh, particularly for star wars um these matchups between like more obscure characters too not like you know yoda versus luke but yeah. it was like you know darth bane versus uh revan you know stuff like that and people are like most people like you know the the layman's of the, uh, the world be like, who is Darth Vayne and who's Revan? Uh, maybe some people might know Revan because of the video game, but like, uh, I was like, oh, you could do that? Like, cause I've had all this, I've always been like a Star Wars fan when I was younger and I read all these other, you know, expanded universe books. So I got into it um, and I was, I, I saw that the production could be elevated on some of those versus videos. Cause like they were literally just doing slideshows, like just like pictures and like slideshows, like Ken Burns stuff, right? And I was like, oh, that's really simple. And they're like getting views. Um, so I started doing that. Yeah, that took off. And I started expanding to other uh, material like Avatar, which is now like the top thing on my channel right now is uh, Avatar, The Last Airbender, not the blue people. Um, and doing that, yeah, I started generating income from that. And that allowed me to go out on my own uh, besides, you know, like working for, uh, you know, a corporation. And, and, and that actually funded the beginnings of my indie publishing uh, going out. And what you were saying about the whole, uh, getting those first thousand or just having a thousand or me talking about like not having a million subscribers but having like, you know, the quarter of a million, it's really important really just to have a core fan base uh, that will follow you because some of my most dedicated beta readers, uh, readers are from my YouTube channel. Now it's not all of them, it's not all, you know, a quarter million of them because it's not gonna overlap mm -hmm. uh, from what I'm doing. But even that few, 
um, like a, there's a, an adage in the indie space where all you need is a thousand true fans to really sustain your publishing career. Because if you know that they're going to, those thousand will always, you know, be out there to uh, buy your book or out there to support you. You really don't need much more than that. And people usually are trying to like shotgun and get everybody to like, you know, hear them and, and yeah. rah, rah, me, me, but you really yeah. don't need that many people to sustain a business. Yeah, no, that's, that's very true. And I never heard, I never heard about that, but but when you think about it, are you like, I even think about a even smaller amount, right? I think about every time as, as a musician, when I was doing shows before a pandemic and stuff, um, I would always hit up the same group of friends and invite them to the show. And I can always mm -hmm. count on them to buy a ticket, you mm -hmm. know, even if they're not going to go. Right. And it's just that that like support that I always knew, like I have like, okay, you know, I got these 30, 30 friends that they're going to support no matter what. I know I'm going to, you know, uh, sell this many tickets. It's going to look good to the promoters and blah, blah, blah. Right. And so right. like, that's the same as like the thousand, as long as you have that, that core, um, you'll be all right. And you can always expand from there, but and making sure you're targeting the right people too, because not everybody is your audience and no one, not everybody should be your audience too. And I think sometimes people get I guess like if it, like like for me if I'm like oh why didn't all 250 thousand people come over and like read my book or whatever but it's just like you you have to know which audiences you're speaking to even if you think they they do overlap um you know there, there's definitely uh, niches that you know you have to like you know make sure you, you're aware of. I was gonna say I was gonna say uh you your audience for everything you do is not always gonna be the same so like like people are gonna like only certain aspects of what you do right but they might not like this right they might not like the indie publishing but they love when you talk about star wars and avatar yep. right so you have to really dig into the audience that you're reaching maybe not all your content can be about avatar right and and diversify it maybe you throw in a book publishing on your indie indie channel or like how to publish yep. a book right and and reach that little small audience um and so there's just ways to like diversify your audience uh, i think that's important uh so the the first thousand how'd you get to a thousand like when did you start seeing your youtube channel grow because I'm struggling, man. I need some tips. Did you do any like Google AdWords? Like, you know, I've done absolutely no ad work for the YouTube channel. It's all been through YouTube's own algorithm. And with that, and it's all, all something that some indie publishers do as well. And again, this is how I'm saying about things like going from one industry to like the other. Um, in YouTube space, uh, they of course like, you know, frequent uploads. Um, they of course like videos that are similar to other videos that are successful in the same way that I saw that there was a versus video, you know, kind of series that was going on on YouTube. Um, but I felt like I could produce them a little bit better. Um, I did that. And because I was producing them better, I got, you know, the, the most viewership in that space uh, during that time. And um, without any ads, because YouTube has this really great algorithm of recommending new videos. And then there's this uh, thing with the sidebar and that sidebar generated, you know, based on how many views, we're not even views because it used to be views. People think uh, YouTube is about views, but now it's about watch time, which um, the, the public can't see, but we can see as a creator on, on our back end, we can see our watch time. Mm -hmm. um, so getting people to watch, not only like click on your video, but to watch it all the way through and click on the next video that makes your, um, your algorithmic ranking go higher, mm -hmm. uh, and having a lot of videos that they will want to click on. So my first view, few got, you know, a few views, but it wasn't until I had like a playlist of 20 star Wars versus videos and like, you know, 10 avatar versus videos that it really started kicking because it's, it's having that, that, that play through that, that run through. And a You're similar having, thing is, yeah, I was going to say people are able to see that first video from you and then they right. like, Oh, he, he has like 10 other star Wars ones. Let me just watch them all right now. Cause it's exactly. addictive. It's like, it's like the TikTok fever when you're on TikTok, you, you don't realize how you're on there for like 12 hours. <laughs> yeah. When you're like, Oh, there's, there's only like 10 second video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what were you about to yeah, say? Though? What you about well, to say? And that, that goes to publishing because there is a, a the idea of um uh, making ads and not making ads uh, although nowadays you have to make ads for your books like period no matter what but back in like what they call the gold rush which was like the um early uh 2010s uh authors could just write a lot of books and that was their ad uh ad revenue uh like romance authors in particular they write very fast because their books tend to be a little bit shorter um just writing a lot would be similar to 
to how YouTube is now where you just have, you know, recommendations and there's a thing called also bots on Amazon where um, if there's similar works or if you have a bunch of books that are on your also bots, that is how you got your revenue is just by writing a lot and producing a lot of the same or similar content. Uh, but nowadays with uh, Amazon and with publishing, it's, it's different now. Like you definitely have to pay for ads, uh, mm -hmm. but YouTube is still in a place where you do not have to necessarily have to do ads if you have identified a, a niche that is not being served on the platform. You can, you see YouTube channels blow up all the time now. Like they're like, I've seen so, so many newer channels birth that have, I'm like, well, you guys that weren't here like last year. And then, mm -hmm. you know, because they're just, you know, they're servicing a part of the audience that, you know, hasn't been there. And I guess the way to do that and identify that, that is to look at the market of whether you're looking at indie or if you're looking at indie publishing or um, looking at YouTube um, and seeing, okay, cool. So I see these sets of channels have these like video game content reviews, but how do I do something different? Oh, let me have my girlfriend come in and like, you know, do it from her perspective of watching me play video games. And that's how girlfriend reviews came up and now has, I think almost 2 million subscribers and they've, they only existed for like the past two years, maybe two and a half years, something yeah. like that. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's always, it's always possible, but Just, you have to do the market you have, research. You have to find a niche. You have to find something to be unique, right? Because, mm -hmm. and that's kind of like a little bit of what I've been struggling with is like, there's everyone now is on this entrepreneurship, financial literacy, let's yeah. slack wealth, right? Like, it's like, how do, it's great, it's great. But it's like, how do I separate myself? Because, you know, I've been wanting to do this. I've been doing it. And now that everyone was in the pandemic and was forced to learn money, um, now everyone is just trying to teach it, right? Or trying to, to kind of give back. And so I'm trying to find like a niche, right? And have you heard of Earn Your Leisure podcast? Mm -mm. I don't really follow much of like financial literacy stuff <laughs> in general. Yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, well, they're like the biggest financial literacy black podcast right now. And they're doing really well. And um, they're pretty much doing everything I want to be doing in the next couple of years. So I'm trying mm. to figure out a different way to separate myself, right? And I think that's very uh, important uh, to highlight. Yeah, on that, that even too, like, that's what I did when I started my YouTube videos is I separated myself by adding an element to the verses that wasn't already present. Mm -hmm. um, and that was a like, well, not to get super nerdy, but there was like an, uh, the end sequence when I actually make the decision of who, who wins. Um, I had a very distinct like wrist, uh, a system of rounds where it was like a, who was most likely to win the early fight, the mid fight and the late fight. Because sometimes when you see fighters uh, like, uh, like UFC or boxers, right? Like, like there's knockout people like Tyson who, you know, they'll knock you out in the first two, the two rounds. But if they, if you get past that point, yeah. they usually get tired. Right. And yeah. then like the, the, the smaller dude, or maybe the one who has yeah. better stamina is the one who wins. So like things like that, I started adding into my verse. So it wasn't just to be like, oh, I think this person wins because they did this big fireball once, you know, like yeah. I go, well, no, like let's look at their style and their, in their, in their fighting ability. And that's what kind of separated me from the uh, current formula that the verses had at that time. That's interesting. Yeah. Thank you for pointing that out. That's, that's amazing. Um, Cool. Well, damn, that's super dope. Okay. Like, so we talked about YouTube and stuff and, and you grew it organically and stuff. Um, what about books? If people want to like promote their books, um, obviously book ads are a way to do it now, but what are some ways you can promote the release of a book? Can you do it on YouTube ads? Can you do it on Google? Like, you know, you want to go into those the, the the two that you listed are actually the most the, the least uh, effective for books <laughs> and the reason for that is because um they're they're more broad um and vague because google and uh youtube are very ubiquitous to just like everything uh so the best place if you're indie publishing to 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 do ads and like i was saying before you have to do them at this point like in, in today's age there's no like it's pay to play for sure um is amazon for sure because uh, Amazon in particular, uh, their, their AMS ads, because those target readers specifically, usually directly on their Kindles. And the reason why those are so effective is because, well, if someone's on their Kindle, they're already a reader. So you're not convincing them, hey, do you want to read when somewhere like YouTube or, or Google, you're not necessarily finding dedicated readers. Um, and Wait, also Facebook what is, ads. What is AMS ads? AMS, that is just the, the uh, Amazon uh, platform for ads, like period. It's just for their ads. I think people use them also for... Um, other products, like if you're doing, um, uh, if you're selling toilet paper or you're selling like some baby toys, but um, uh, authors have found success with it because it's like, if you're on Amazon already, you probably have a Kindle um, and you can directly target readers. Uh, there's also um, 
Facebook ads are, are very effective. And the reason uh, Facebook ads are very effective is because they have direct targeting. So you can make a breakdown of like, um, I only want to target people who have, who own a Kindle, uh, mm -hmm. who are interested in, in, in Black fantasy, who are who, who have seen Black Panther. You know, you can really narrow it down. Like I think someone did experiments once where he wanted to see how narrowed you can get the ads. And he targeted an ad at his roommate to like clean his bed or like wash dishes from like that. So he made an ad like saying like, have you washed the dishes today or some, something funny like that, right? And he That's was able to whittle it down to his one friend based on all his like, you know, weird interests, you know, it's, it's that powerful. Uh, Facebook um, ads are very powerful because of that reason, because of the targeting, um, which is also the reason why Facebook has been like in trouble for like the past few years because of the privacy stuff and yeah, why I mean, Apple you is think like combating about, that. Yeah, Facebook, like you, you think, you think about something or, or you, you say uh -huh. something out loud and then Facebook <laughs> picks it up and it shows pops an up ad. and then Instagram picks it yeah, up. And then, they literally know. detect speech. Like, and, and I've, I've seen people on YouTube, like do these experiments. They literally detect speech and they take photos of your face every five seconds. Like it's crazy. Yes. Yes. They got in a little, like, I know you, uh, Apple is combating them right now with like a lot of that stuff. Um, mm -hmm. And I think Google's like starting to, you know, get, get into that too. Like, you know, combating like the privacy stuff with, with the Facebook stuff. Um, but yes, uh, that, oh, and BookBub. BookBub will be another uh, big one uh, for the ad platform, particularly people who are looking for deals because uh, they're known for having like, you know, like discounts for BookBub uh, ads and stuff like that. What is BookPub ads? I'm looking up everything you say. <laughs> <laughs> well, BookBub, hold on. I think this car is coming through. So let me hold it's all good. Welcome to LA, everyone. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Especially me because I live right next to the firehouse, too. Uh, okay. Um, so BookBub apps is the largest book platform because they have, I think, something like 7 million uh, subscribers on their email list. And they send out email blasts every day about, like, new deals um, on books. And uh, it, it literally can change authors, like, whole careers, whole series um, if they, you know, have a, a series and they want to, like, here's a book one for free. And then you can read the rest of my 12 book series or whatever it might be. Um, so uh, essentially BookBub has just generated a lot of reader emails. Um, and, and those readers uh, really enjoy the recommendations because they don't pick everybody. So like you can apply for BookBub and I think they only have like a 20% acceptance rate or something like that. Um, but if you do get on there, you're exposed to 7 million readers um, who will you know actually actively buy your books. Like I was saying before, they have the exact right audiences down to like genre versus uh, if you're doing some of these other platforms, which are just kind of like widespread and you're not necessarily sure if you're going to get the right people to look at the link and click on the link because with BookBub, like generally speaking, people are going to click, not only click, but also buy whatever that deal is. Damn, bro. You should have told me this like two months ago when I released yeah. the book. <laughs> so here's the thing. I don't, I didn't know all this at the, at the start, but I uh, usually tell people to follow these three people um, who are like the indie space, like, you know, gurus, gods, um, jo uh, uh, Joanna Penn, uh, Penn with two N's. Joanna Penn is like the godmother of like any publishing, uh, any publishing. She got in during that early um, Amazon gold rush. Okay. Uh, Mark Dawson, who does the self-publishing formula. I think uh, and then Jenna Moresi, who is a big author tuber, uh, who does a lot of craft uh, books and all she talks about like marketing and, and stuff like that. But she's the coolest one because she is like, She's the youngest of those three. And she like the way she explains it is in a very like casual way. Yeah, exactly. Can you spell that last name or try to? Yeah, so Jenna Moresi is uh, J-E-N-N-A. And then Moresi is M-O-R-E-S, not yet, E-S, uh, E-C-I. Moresi, M-O-R-E-C-I. Okay. okay. Those are the three. Like I would just follow them and they'll, they have, they have a wealth of information. Also, you'll naturally find other people too that, you know, you might want to look into like, a, like a, on the a sell more book show podcast. Yeah, yeah exactly. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Cool, cool. It's like sell more books show is another one that I do a uh, six figure author is another like podcast. There's a, there's so many out there to, to choose from for, for all that. For sure. For sure. Cool. Cool. All right. Well, all right. Now, now we've kind of transitioned from YouTube to books. So let's stay on the book topic. Um, how did you come up with your publishing company um, and, and start, you know, all your AB book services that you offer? Yeah. So AB book service. Okay. That comes on the tail end. So first was just the, the publishing. So I was um, like, oh, let me just do it myself. Because when I was like doing some of the research, you actually get more royalties by being indie than going through a publisher. Um, and also you, you know, you take care of your own work, you know, better. 
Uh, but also not even just that, because I think sometimes people um, think that indie publishing or self-publishing is literally you doing everything yourself, which some people do, but I do not recommend. Uh, I'm still very much doing what a traditional publisher would do. Um, I'm hiring uh, book editors, multiple book editors, so developmental editors, content editors, proofreaders. I'm also uh, hiring um, artists, as we talked about. I don't know if we talked about that, actually. Was that, we talked about artists That was on- before- that was before we got on, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. So <laughs> artists, I hire artists and typographers to do my book covers, professionals who know what the industry standards are so that I'm not just throwing up anything because uh, book covers are the most important thing you can have um, on your book. Second after, after that, being editing of your actual book. Um, and sometimes, you know, indies don't really consider that or, you know, that, that goes over their head, but those things are very important. And to get professionals to do that, uh, or at least to consult with, um, so what I'm doing with publishing is the same as I'm doing traditional, but I'm getting more on the back end because the royalties are much higher. Um, so I did that with my first book, The Kishi, which was based on the Southwest uh, African mythology uh, of the uh, Kimbundu people, uh, which is about like a handsome guy in the, uh, in the front and the hyena in the back. It's like a, a cautionary tale. But like women don't trust in sweet words or you know a nice yeah. face kind of a thing uh and then that progressed to like other works like the sky pirate chronicles um the tales of estuan uh, lost tales from estuan and then moving on to contemporary works which i'm doing now with tj young and the orishas uh, the gatekeeper staff being the first book that just came out uh this year and then in doing that i was making my own audio books because i already knew that because i had multimedia background i knew how to like do that i was like oh that seems very easy just produce audio because i usually do a video and audio and then most of my youtube videos are you know audio with you know some imagery and then my buddy who i did a co-authorship with uh, we did a, a book together and then i did the audio and he's like whoa like who do you do like who 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 does your audio i was like oh Oh, I do like, you know, I just like hire actors from LA because I used to work at Apple and there was a lot of actors there. So I just like yeah. asked them to come through to like my, my booth and like, you know, like come and do the work. And he's like, you should probably be doing this as a service. And I was like, oh yeah, I kind of considered that, but I didn't really, you know, and he was like telling me, no, I got the time. To do that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, he's like, you need to do it. And then, so I did it. And for the past few years, I've been doing indie books for, for others to the point now where I actually went full time with my audiobook service in July um and like, like acting, last July yeah like last July just now and then on my third week my third week of full time I got contacted by Macmillan Audio which is one of the big five publishers um and I'm now doing audiobooks for them like they literally have me booked until February of 2022 and I was like wow and I literally like I think I thanked him three times uh Kareek uh, uh Salil is his name uh, I was like yo like you, for you jump starting me like I probably would not have done that I probably would did it for my own books but I probably wouldn't have done it for others and that would not have exposed me to Macmillan to like find me and be like you know hey can you do audiobooks for us and I was like um yes yes yeah. I think I can <laughs> all right look, well, let's talk about that real quick so so you had just were you still working for Apple until July no, 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 no. Apple, I left when I started doing the YouTube thing, and that was in 2015. Oh, shit. So that's a while. So you've, so you've been a YouTuber so one, for five years, six years. Yes. Yeah. Well, well, I was like a full-time YouTuber, and that, that was like my main income um, for 2015 till now. And then in July is when I was like, hey, let me try the audio. Because I was literally just doing it as a test trial. I was like, oh, let me just see. Like, let me stop doing YouTube so I can see that, like, what my passive income on YouTube is, which is nice because actually my passive in uh, income on YouTube like pays for the rent you know yeah. which is cool um and then i was like okay so let me see how much i can generate from um just just one july and, and yeah. just do let an me audio stop and surviving it. and let me build wealth it's pretty much yeah, exactly <laughs> yeah. um so then i did that and yeah i'm working out and on my second month of doing how, it how'd they find you how'd they find you uh, uh so that's Mac what I, and I, what's funny yeah macmillan so like uh -huh. the way because I, I thought it was a regular client because people emailed me through my, my portal right and i think the his email was just like oh, hey, you know, I have a few books that I would like to do uh, with you. Uh, do, do you want to schedule a call? I was like, yeah, let's schedule a call. Like I usually do like Zoom or Google Meet or whatever that. And so as I was doing the meeting, I was like just explaining it normal, like, oh, like trying to figure out like what genre this person writes in or whatever. And then like halfway through the meeting, I look at his actual profile <laughs> picture and I was like, wait, does that say Mac Millen or whatever? And, and I even asked him, I was like, oh, hey, um, are you like an indie author and you, you Mac Millen is like you're using your account service? Oh no, he's like, I'm calling on behalf of Mac Millen Audio. Yeah. You know, and I was like, well, I was like, the people who produced 
children of blood and bone like you like that mac miller and he's like yeah 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 and i was like oh my god like internally i'm like i'm kind of glad i didn't know that this was actually an interview with like you know mac miller i just thought it was like a regular client so i was speaking about like all the indies the the jargon of like audiobooks and stuff like that so i think he was probably like testing me like because he was letting me talk he didn't let me go like he didn't say like oh no i know all of this like you don't have to explain this to me like he let me like (laughs) do all these long explanations about like what pfh means and like what like you know like finished hour and stuff like that um and and so yeah so at the end of that he's like yeah uh, let, let's see what you do uh, can do and then i did like a children's book for them to start and now they giving me yeah like a project a month until february like 2020 that's really dope that's really 2022 dope. yeah yeah no so yeah i mean you're in it's crazy dude you're indie but your your services that you provide the quality is just like like big time like it's 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 industry like i first heard your book through royal because you did his audio book. Um, and when I first heard it, I was like, dang, I've never heard like an audio book like this with like so much detail with like sound effects in the back. You yeah. know, normally for me, I just listen to like the, the, uh, the autobi- like, yeah, yeah, the autobiographies of let me tell my life story. And it's just the author talking, no background stuff, or it's just like basic, right? It's just one track one track right right when I heard yours it was like you're hitting me from every angle I was like I felt like I was in the story and I also never I've only read maybe three or listened to three audio books that were like actual fantasy novels right that mm-hmm. were actual stories everything else was an autobiography or a wealth journey or something like that right right but, some non-fiction yeah, yeah so when I heard yours I was like oh man this dude's good so I like uh I was like, dude, where did you find that? You know, who did this? And like, I don't even know. I don't even know how Royal found me, to be honest. Like, I don't even know how people find me at the time. Yeah, I think, I think, I can't remember. He said he, I think it was just random. It was random. (laughs) Uh, But, but then I was like, okay, cool. And he was like, dude, and the best part is uh, the dude's black, like his black oh, yeah, company. And I was like, oh, sign me <laughs> up. I was like, please do not be so expensive because I want to give him my money, but I yeah, ain't got yeah, that yeah. much money. I, yeah. So when I hit you up and you were like, here's the price, I was like, oh my God. Yeah, because like, that's specifically what I wanted to do is have a flexible pricing for Indy. Yeah. So I do, I break down a lot of the pricing that you don't often see from editors and engineers or narrators yeah. because it's all lumped together and like, dang, why is that so much? And they're like, oh, because they're doing this, doing all this proofing. But I'm like, well, most indies do like to do their own proofing. They like to listen to it. So I'm like, maybe I can just like take that expense out because they're going to be doing that. Like, why do yeah. I need to like charge for that? I'm um, in other little things too that you could take out that I'm like, I can make this like way more flexible for people. And I don't understand why some of the industry is so expensive as it is. Like, it I makes think, no like some of the SAG, not SAG, no, SAG is for um, Screen Actors Guild. Actors, um, yeah. For uh, the, the 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 audio engineer, like um, union prices are like really high. You know, I'm like, I don't understand why. Like, you really don't have to. Be. Um, so, <laughs> another thing, another thing that stood out to me is when I went to your website, you had a lot of black actors, and I was like, dude, this yes. dude, this dude yeah. is. is and I just hired my first engineer. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I think Vaughn is the one you're talking about because yeah, Vaughn did yours. Um, I I just hired my first engineer, second engineer, because I was like, okay, I'm starting to get like kind of booked. I kind of want to keep a like a two month out period. So if I ever get to that third month, I'm like, hey, I gotta like you know share out some of this uh this work. Um, and it was the same situation that you had, right? So like yeah. I uh, got his email because I was like, oh hey, I know that you have somebody editing your your audiobooks. Another author friend I have, right? And I was like, hey, I'm like looking for another engineer to like help out or whatever. And then he emails me and I see his profile picture and I'm like, wait, yo, you're black. <laughs> let's go like like yeah. immediately like immediately i was like yo i did not know this like this, yeah, this yeah. changes everything you know yeah. <laughs> like, that's this hilarious. amazing that's hilarious man yeah that's a, that's amazing well yeah like i said uh, amazing quality by you and um i actually want to play a little snippet um right now of my book um that you had von dexter montague the second do um the second. <laughs> so uh we're gonna play that right now um everyone stay tuned and thank you chapter one What is money? There are different types of money depending on what country you live in, but all money has one thing in common. It allows you to use the currency to buy other items such as food, toys, clothing, and shelter. Money puts a price or value on the cost of each item that people or companies are supplying to others, Daring Darius explained. Money has been around in some fashion for hundreds of years. The earliest form of money was developed by trading. As far back as the Indians and Egyptians, 
people would trade cattle for produce or fruits for cotton. They developed a value system for what each of their produces were worth. So, I could trade you a bag of peanuts for a new cell phone? Cash Cody asked. No, with a trading technique, the value had to be fair, Daring Darius said. That's fair, Cash Cody said. You like peanuts, and I need the new smartphone, Cash Cody argued. Do you know how many pounds of peanuts you would need to be the same value as your new $800 cell phone? Daring Darius asked. I don't know, Cash Cody said. I figure a two-pound bag should be good enough. Not even close, Daring Darius said. A one-pound bag of peanuts has a value of approximately 20 cents per pound. All right, what's up, everybody? We are back. I hope you enjoyed that little audio book of mine, Money Talks, The Beginner's Guide to Investing, done by AB Book Services. Thank you uh, for that amazing quality. Um, if you want to, you can reach out to him um, and, and get a quote on what it would cost for an audiobook. Also, I, I really appreciate you kind of directing me. You know, it wasn't like, let me just take your money. Um, it was like, <laughs> right. it was throughout the process. I was asking you a lot of questions, right? As a first time self-publisher and, and doing an audiobook for the first time, I was like, hey, should I do it this way? Or would you recommend this way? And you kind of gave both sides. It wasn't just like, hey, do this, right? Mm -hmm. Um, or it wasn't like, I don't know, maybe you should Google it, but you were like, <laughs> <laughs> it was like when I asked you, I think one of the questions, main questions um, that yeah, you helped me with was, you know, deciding where to publish it through, right? Do I go through Amazon or there was another one and I actually went with the other one. Um, oh, Find Away Voices? Find Away Voices. That one, yeah, that distributes wide because if yep. you... Amazon, it's just going to be Amazon and I think just iTunes. Those are the only two platforms that they go to. But finally, yeah. it will get you in libraries. It'll get you in Kobo so you can be in Canada. Yeah. Uh, it's international so you can be in all those spaces. Like, you know, yeah. Everywhere. And, 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 and the point of this was that you explained that in the email and on the phone call. And so I really appreciate that. Um, so shout oh, yeah. Out no, to no, <laughs> no problem. And that's something that came from Apple Retail because we were always told never to say no to, to, to a customer now first i'm like don't ever say no i'm not no i'm not gonna just like let them go do whatever they want to do but they but what they meant by that is just to give them options so never say no but say like oh well we can't do this for you however we have this other you know always give options rather than just being like mm, can't do it you know yeah. Like, yeah for sure i appreciate that cool cool um well, I want to dive into uh, one of my favorite segments. It's called the Hella Misguided segment, where I ask the same question to each um, entrepreneur and business owner that comes up here. And that question is simple. If you were to write a letter to your 18-year-old self, what would a summary of that letter be? You can list a couple bullet points um, if you want to touch on different topics. I think y'all already know what's going to happen, but it's going <laughs> to be like 18. And especially because this is 18-year-old Antoine who had just won that scholarship. I'd be yeah. like, Antoine, don't. I know you want to buy that camera and I know you want to <laughs> try and do the short film thing. But I would advise you to look at a place called Amazon, yeah. Kindle Direct Publishing. Look yeah. at that. You know those stories you wrote when you were in middle school? Yeah. Pick those back up again. Yeah. Uh, clean them up a little bit. Write it for the public and do it now because there's something called the Amazon Bull Rush has it's about to happen the kindle gold rush um Facts. you can generate quite a bit of income by making imaginary stories on a page <laughs> do yeah. that immediately yeah no that that is that is you're 100 percent right and i think i think like you know like the purpose of this podcast is to like kind of give the mistakes that we've made as entrepreneurs and that, that are currently going through to the audience right so that they can kind of avoid those and and it's super hard. Like imagine your 18, 18 year old self, you're super prideful. You're super mm -hmm. ignorant. Like you don't want to listen. Like, and so I think it's good that if it's coming, the letter is coming from yourself, from yourself as opposed yeah. to someone else, because it's like, damn, what would have happened if I picked up a letter from my future self saying like, yo, do this. Like I'm listening. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like it's kind of crazy. So, um, Nah, yeah, yeah that, that's a good one, man. That's a good one. Sincerely yours, yourself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that might be the uh, the title of this. Sincerely yours, yourself. I love it. I love it. Cool. Do you want to go ahead and touch on um, this? Is, I, I found, I just learned about this this morning and listened to um, a little sample, but Knucklehead Fred, 
are yes. you a writer are you explain I'm that just, whole thing so yeah knuckle okay. fred i'm completely just a publisher on and it's funny okay. because the person person who wrote the um Arius Williams the author of that book uh is the reason why I'm probably doing TJ Young and the Orishas now because I was not aware of the Orishas or the West African pantheon system until he did his work because while I was doing the filming stuff he uh, had me on as an editor for a short film because he lived in Nigeria with his wife for several years and they uh, did uh, uh webisodes and a short film uh, called Ashe which was a um mythology historical mythology uh based on nigerian myth and in that they talk about like the orishas and stuff like that and so he saw me doing the book publishing stuff he's like oh hey i have published a uh, i self-published a book called knucklehead fred and it's very similar to you how he said he was really interested in how much production quality i was inserting into it and again like i'm saying it's not because i'm doing it it's because i'm getting the right professionals and the right teams to come together and and to, to build those sorts of things um and so i told him all that stuff and he was like oh um can you help me like you know do my book again so he had published his first book already but we redid it with the, the new updated art that you you see today um and then the second book i thought he did publish but he didn't apparently he had it all finished but he didn't actually like put it out um and so we did that book and then we did his third book that he never got to do um and and that was really uh awesome and and that's doing really well like we're actually in the middle of talking to like a church in florida that wants to buy like quite a few copies of the book and i'm like what that like that's pretty amazing and even like the way i think he made back all of his uh, money on that first week of his first book you know coming out and i was like yeah. wow i should be writing children's books apparently um, so yeah that was a really good experience with someone that i knew from a past you know short film filmmaking life that you know also did the same thing with any publishing yeah no that's super dope and and it's and i i like it um, because, you know, it had the rhyme scheme in it, which yeah. I found very, uh, as a musician, don't, you know, those are my two favorite things. So when you add something that a lot of kids like, and that's easy to follow into something that a lot of kids hate, aka books um, and learning, uh, it kind of meshes those two together and makes it easier to, to understand. And that's kind of why I did for my book, I did a conversation between two kids, right? Instead of like a textbook, this is how you should manage money. These are the ways. I did a conversation where a kid is teaching a kid and because I think that's easier to learn and process mm -hmm. for kids. And and then, you know, um, so I really like this. Uh, does this guy have like Instagram or anything? Can I reach out to him? I would yeah, to um, he has a website. I think he, I don't know if it's Aristotle.com. Uh, I, I think it's Arius. Yeah, it is Aristotle. So it's A-R-I-A-S-T-O-T-L-E. -E, and that's where you can find all his stuff. All right. Uh, I think I messed up. Do it. spell that again. A-R-I-A-S. Uh, T O T L E dot com. Oh, no. All right. Can and you yeah, he is on Instagram. Can you type it in the chat? Oh, you want to type? Uh, yeah. I can type it for you right now. Uh, I, I got you. you. I got you right now. Cool. I'm going to reach out to him because I definitely, uh, I, I love it. I love it. That's awesome. Cool. What? Okay. Uh, uh oh. That was weird. A little uh, staticky. And the headphones um cool so let, let's talk about like the journey because it's super hard to push yourself to kind of go full-time entrepreneur right a lot of people you know the what if or i need that state stability um so you did it twice i literally legit just had that, that conversation yeah i had that conversation with my uh, friend uh, after softball like uh -huh. we were playing games or whatever and she said that a same same thing she's like i don't know how you can take the risk of like basically working for yourself like that yeah yeah so it, that, it's hard man so like you did it twice you did leaving apple to become a full-time youtuber which is fucking insane right people look at you like what are you doing uh <laughs> youtube what the hell right but i mean that was the perfect time to do it my and mom is very supportive and she has her ways of saying saying things that are like you you shouldn't be doing this. I don't know why you're doing this. Yeah. Um. Because when I left Apple, she's like, "But they give you benefits." And I, <laughs> like, you know, like, 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 like. But she didn't outward say like, "Don't do the YouTube thing." She, but she was like saying like all the benefits of working. At Apple yeah, yeah. Kind of yeah. Which is very funny. That's hilarious. Um. Well, quick, quick side note. But, um. How like how much can how much does YouTube pay? All right, because no one ever goes into it depends YouTube. on the watch time so it's not like people 
people usually think, oh, it's views, right? More views. And that's how you, you click, you get like a- it, Is that why you, know, you did, all, is that why you did a 12 hour fucking video the other day? No, 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 no. <laughs> that usually doesn't get you that much because people aren't, the retention on that is not gonna, gonna happen. Yeah, yeah. That was because my book had just come out and I just wanted to like make uh, awareness okay. of the book. So I did like a, a queer thing. I, I was trying to do 24 hours, but then I was like, there wasn't enough people there. And I was like- I know, the, the comments so, like, were like, yo, at least you did 12. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly, exactly. <laughs> um but yeah yeah it's all based on watch time so like um i don't know like it, it, they did a new thing now where they actually tell, tell you the cpm i think which i think is like no that's clicks per minute that's not it's not cpm they have some sort of um uh, um analytic now where it tells you how much you're, you're earning based on minutes so let me see if i can pull that up rpm is what they call it rpm which is rate per which minute. means revenue per oh, mil right. Uh, no, no, yeah, yeah, it's revenue per meal, uh, so per thousand, uh, so they pay on that basis, and they also, so they do a double thing, so they do it based on views, and they do it on watch time, uh, and then they have CPM, which is uh, effective playback uh, cost per meal, which is based on um, the reten retention of how long someone's watching your video, um, but it's different for every platform, different for each uh, little niche, um, for me, like, my RPM is 197 per meal and 570 per meal. So you can calculate that. You, you, you can look at like, you know, my YouTube numbers and like calculate. And also places like Social Blade. Social Blade usually has, they don't have accurate numbers, but they have accurate ranges, if that makes sense. Uh, so Social Blade is one that you can go to if you're ever trying to like look to see the success of a certain uh, channel or anything like that. And yeah, they show a range of like estimated monthly earnings, you know, and those, those if you look in the middle of that, it's usually pretty accurate, um, the Social Blade. Um, so stuff. and they have, they break it down even like by videos or like that too which is pretty cool yeah so like it really doesn't depend on how many followers you have like so no a, it doesn't a, care about your subscribers at all it doesn't care a, about that at all a six thousand subscriber could make the same as a hundred thousand subscriber and yep, if they have the same uh watch time yep that's crazy that's crazy yeah. but the only the benefit of subscribers or the idea behind having more subscribers that theoretically you're getting in more subscription boxes and people are supposed to be clicking on them yeah. more often. but if there's no click through rate with your your subscribers then it don't they don't matter <laughs> you know what i mean like he, the person who has a smaller channel that's more engaged uh is more successful yeah yeah no that that is that is uh that's very true i just looked up yours on social blade <laughs> i just looked up uh, yours you've been uh, you've been on youtube since uh 2006 that's dope yeah remember like i told you like high school you just put your stuff on there because no bandwidth cost yeah, yeah yeah that's super dope man um cool cool well damn i learned a lot and i need to like so i've been like really trying to get this youtube stuff um going so i think you just gave me a little bit more motivation and yeah, just market research on that just like looking in the spaces that you're in and figuring out where you know where you nudge in at mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then um you know where i can fit in but also stand out super hard <laughs> mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. but and then yeah the even the book ads and stuff i might pick your brain a little bit uh more on that later throughout as i do these these research i'm gonna look definitely at mark dawson up, he's the he's the ad guy for, oh, okay cool for sure. cool um Cool. Well, I want to uh, wrap up the episode. Uh, I usually uh, do a segment called Guided Conclusions, where I ask you a question we haven't talked about previously before this recording. So it could be mm -hmm. very, very serious, right? Or it could be mm -hmm. funny. Um, today, <laughs> Today's question um, is, let me find it. Okay, for you, what's the perfect way for a new author to release their first book ever? What do you, how do you go about it? Is it pre-releases? Is it um, showing up to signings? How, do, how does a new author release their first book? Depends on what they want on the end of it. If you're looking for sales, you should be doing something called the rapid release strategy, which is you should not actually be putting out your first book. You should be putting out your first series um, and you should not release that first book until you have at least book two of three done or if it's like a mostly like five books then you really should have like your first three books done before you have it out because amazon really likes it when you put out book after book after book um same with youtube the whole like clicking on to the next video TikTok clicking on the next video uh same with the with the book stuff uh so rapid release strategy if you're looking for just pure like revenue that's the way the best way to do it as well as the, an ad strategy which like i was saying mark dawson is a really, really good person to follow for that sort of a thing uh rapid release uh, if, if revenue if it's uh if you're looking for like review 
haikus or just like a, a long-term career kind of a thing, then yes, I would say do a long pre-order. On most of these platforms, you can do a one-year uh, pre-order, uh, in which case, yes, you, you want to uh, get people aware of that um, and, and go wide with that instead of being Amazon exclusive. Yeah. Uh, that means, you know, being on Kobo, being on Google Play, being on Amazon, being on Barnes & Noble, being with Apple. Um, and then, yeah, having that long, long marketing uh, scenario with the pre-order release. So, you know, trying to reach out to podcasts, uh, possibly thinking about uh, hiring a actual marketing consultant uh, to do all that with you um, for like a blog, what do they call it, blog tours and stuff like that. Or if you want to do like physical stores and that sort of thing, you know, reaching out to local stores. Uh, it's actually very, people don't realize it, it's actually very simple to call Barnes and Nobles and like, like, asked or request uh the only thing that they are looking for is that you can get butts in the seat that that sort of a thing but like most of these places if you can sell yourself enough that you can get butts in those seats and get people to buy those signed copies at some of these like you know local readings um you can do it it's just reaching out honestly and most of these numbers you can find just by maybe not a quick google search for all of them but you know doing a little bit of google search to find some of these these contacts i'll uh, say so those would be like the two the two avenues like you can do the long long form thing the pre-order thing or you can do the rapid release the thing that tends to be more successful is the exclusivity with amazon and rapid release if you are first starting out yeah dope dope yeah no that's great i just got i just uh like last month got my book in the local book bookstore here in benicia um so it's dope i think in like three weeks it sold like three copies I'm proud look of up that. uh look up nubian uh bookstore they're actually very good with uh indie black authors uh they are i think station in atlanta or i think i think they're in or somewhere in georgia uh if i'm not mistaken nubian bookstore they're very very uh good with helping out indie blacks nubian bookstore god i got so much research to do after this uh <laughs> this podcast mm -hmm. you put me on to a lot of stuff thank you man um, no, i'm no, sure no. i'm sure you helped the audience too so uh <laughs> thank you man well um i appreciate you coming up here and i know you you want to get back to your napping man since you've been up since well i, uh, I actually have one other reading i actually talking with another audiobook something in like 10 yeah. minutes so yeah i got more stuff before i can take my nap <laughs> ah man it's all good it's all good hey um antoine i appreciate you coming up here um it's been a pleasure and we'll definitely stay in contact um do you want to share all your social medias and obviously your youtube channel for everyone to reach you just antoinebandelay.com you'll find literally everything uh about me social media youtube audiobook services like all of it like antoinebandelay.com is the one-stop shop Literally, literally. Cool, cool. Well, I appreciate you. You heard it here, guys. This is the Misguided Podcast. We intend to guide you to a better future. My name is Juwan. Again, I'm sitting here with publisher Antoine Bandelay. I said the last name right. Yeah, right. Bandelay. Yeah, yeah. Hey, it's a party. <laughs> nice. Thank you, guys. Hope you enjoy listening.